I'll be able to hit him on that Facebook. Yeah, true. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is that. It's a good morning. Amen. Right. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Mm. I'm going to start out. Uh, I'm going to pray. And then I've got a testimony from yesterday that was pretty powerful. But Heavenly Father, we're just grateful for this time to come together in your presence. Father God, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes, Lord. Father, we just love you today. We thank you for your word, Father God, that um, that reigns over all things. Your word that reigns above the storm. Your your word that reigns above sickness, disease, the curse, poverty, everything. It's all about your word, Father. I pray that your word will bring transformation today. That the words that are being released that are bringing life. They will bring life, Lord. Transformation. We just thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to understand, Lord, and a grace to, to walk into everything that you're going to say, Lord. Father, we love you today. We praise you. We yes. honor you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So yesterday, <laughs> um, we had a little cool event it took place. We... Um, went and had lunch with one of our partners and uh, I guess the first cool thing that happened was he greeted me at the door with a check that's always cool right yeah. for the ministry just hey how you doing I'm like good <laughs> you know, yeah. need more partners yeah. anyway so we went in and uh, you know we're always talking about being intentional you know when we go out and that's important and we're not just I'm not just up here saying it like we need to be intentional with the gospel amen like, that is the commission. The gospel is the commission. Amen? Amen. We're called to go out to teach, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're called to make disciples. Disciples are discipline followers. So it's interesting to note, when Jesus called the disciples, he told them to leave everything behind. Yeah. Everything. Don't bring nothing. You know, we think we've got to have it all together we've got to have this and that no we just we go we got our testimony we got the word of god we got the right. faith of god we got the blood of jesus we're fully equipped and the gospel the gospel is going to supply our needs amen amen that's all in prison the whole time that's all i knew was the word of god that was it and, and josh is probably the same way i mean i camped in the word I stayed in the word dwelt on the word meditated on the word you know god told joshua he said if you meditate he gave joshua the keys to success he said if you meditate on my word day and night he says then i will make your way prosperous and i will give you good success the word of god amen and that's what we're that's what christopher was talking about yesterday you know um, focusing on the word in the storm and Peter had the same testimony. You know, as long as Peter was focused on the word, you know, Jesus gave Peter a word and he said, I bid you to come to walk on the water. And as long as he was focused on Jesus or the word, 
he was able to do the supernatural. He was able to walk on water. But as soon as he started, his focus got off the word. His focus got off of Jesus. And he started focusing on the wind and the waves. The wind representing things that we can feel. Emotions. The waves representing things we can see in the natural, the natural realm. He sank. And we got to keep our mind on things above. Amen? Amen. Some people be, you know, don't be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good, but we want to be so spiritually minded that we're earthly amazing. Come yeah. on. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Seriously. Come on. So we go in there, we sit down. I'm not going to really say where we're at, but we started talking to the waitress. And uh, it's very simple, guys. It ain't hard. You know, we all, I always use this. Is there anything we're going to pray for our food? Is there anything that we can pray with you about today? And man, she lit up like a Christmas tree. <coughs> but here's the crazy thing. So last Friday, I was actually supposed to have lunch with this gentleman. And he had to cancel at the last minute. Well, she had something happen last Friday that was pretty bad. Um, she ended up getting in trouble. So she wasn't at work. She was supposed to work, but she wasn't at work. And this Friday, fast forward, we, re- we rescheduled, or yesterday, we rescheduled to eat yesterday, <coughs> which was Tuesday. And um, she picked up an extra shift yesterday. She wasn't even supposed to work. Hey. But what we, what we prayed about and what we discussed with her was exactly what she needed in that moment. And then the gentleman that I ate lunch with gave her a $100 tip. Bam! And she broke down like a 12-gauge. He's so silly. He's so silly. 12-gauge shotgun. Broke down. All the way down. <laughs> you know, but it's just the gospel, man. <clears throat> the gospel. And now she ended up giving, connecting her and my wife, and she's going to be at Dan Moeller on Sunday. Hey. So we were able to share the gospel with her, love on her. And Paul said, I didn't, he says, I didn't come to the gospel just with the gospel. He says, I come with power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not in word only. Amen. The gospel has demonstration. Amen. It's the power of God unto salvation, unto sozo, deliverance, healing, wholeness, preservation, soundness. And Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Come on. Amen. We've been talking about that, how we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. And when we understand that we're the righteousness of God in Christ and we stand before Him holy and we stand before Him blameless, then inside of that identity, inside of knowing who we are, lies the power of salvation. There's a power that's tied together with that. Amen? So, just be intentional. Like, if we never would have said anything, she would have missed out. And she basically told us that at four, she said, I was in church for 14 years and something happened in church with her mom. And she said, I was, it, it made her, she was ashamed of it. So her relationship with the Lord was severed because of that. And ever since then, she's been going down a, the wrong path. Mm. And she, she's like, man, this is, this is exactly what I needed to get me back. <clears throat> so it could be just as simple as like forgetting about whatever those things are going on in your life all the time, you know, not saying neglecting things, but just constantly having that communication going on with the Father, that even inside, even inside of a trial or situation or whatever's going on in your life, you still take the time, kind of like the Good Samaritan, you still take the time to minister to that person that's on the side of the road. And there's a blessing inside of that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, recently we had a meeting with some people that we... Bobby and I that we really respect and one of the gentlemen's been basically doing what we've been doing for a long time and he said he pulled me to the side and he said this he said if we send these men away he said we could get them jobs we could get them we could teach them money management skills we can teach them all these things but if we don't give them the pure gospel he says then we're serving them an injustice come on Because if this right here, if this right here is not renewed to the Word of God, you could have a million dollars. 
You could be the wealthiest man on the earth. You could have the best plan on earth. But if you don't have the gospel of Jesus Christ, your mind renewed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. And we looked at that. You know, the two houses. The house that's built on the foolish man and the wise man. The house that's built on the rock. Like the storm's going to come against both houses. But if our house is built on the gospel of Jesus Christ and the storm's going to come, yeah. the storm's going to come. But if our gospel, if our life is founded on the gospel of the rock, Jesus Christ, then our house is going to stand. Amen? Amen. So my heart, you guys know my heart. My heart has always been about the gospel. Amen. The gospel, the gospel, the gospel. And we need to allow the, the word of God to transform our minds. Um, Really, the Bible only mentions one thing that brings transformation. The Word, yeah. the Word of God. Yeah, the quickening Word. Really. That's right. The, the Rhema Word of God. Yeah. The revelatory Word of God is what brings transformation in your life. Amen. <laughs> when, I, when I came home, man, I can't even tell you like just the years of hanging out with Jesus and you know all the promises and came home and he did every every single thing he said he was going to do it might not have been in the timing that I wanted you know but God knew what he was doing you know in the in the process you know God's doing things in our lives he's he's preparing us to steward the blessing he's preparing us to steward the anointing you know, he's preparing us to do all these things so that when he does entrust us with what he showed us, we'll be ready for it. Amen? We don't want to get, you know, the Bible, the Proverbs said, or the Psalm says, don't be like the horse or the mule, the mule. You know, the horse is stubborn. Or the horse gets ahead of God, the mule is stubborn. It, it's, you know, bucking against God. And the horse gets ahead of God. You know, we want to walk hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. Amen. The horse takes off, but you won't do it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We want to. I think what you're saying is you want us to be ox. Those things. Yeah. Oxes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Flow, flow in. Hey, let's go there. Yeah. Amen. Matthew. I like that. Was it Matthew 11:28? So, we've been doing a conference recap. This is going to be the last day of this. We talked about forgetting about the things. Paul said this one thing I do. I forget about the things that are behind me, and I press towards the mark. Amen. The second thing we talked about is what we just basically covered is building upon Jesus. If we don't build upon Jesus, the house isn't going to stand. That's right. Right? And then the last point that we talked about on the third day of the conference was what we the whole we become. Right? What we behold, we become. So it's important that we see who the Father is. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And we've just went through, we've gone through the Gospels. Now we're in the Epistles. By the way, we're in Philippians now. If you guys want to jump along with us, get in Philippians. Read it over and over. Get it in your heart. These are, these are letters that were written to the church. We are the church. Yes, it was written to the church at Philippi, but we are the church. Right? Read that word and see how you can apply it to you. See how you can apply it to your life. Amen? Get in there. Allow that word to bring transformation. Allow two big, huge things there. Ready? I just pointed out. I'm filming to interrupt you. Well, I do no, go. Interrupt you. One was Paul was like, I tell you this one thing I do. I don't look back to the past. Amen. I do not. I mean, it just popped. I mean, I've read it a thousand times, but it just keeps popping out to me. I don't look back to the past, but I look ahead to the future so that I could run this race to win, to get a victory, right? That's one thing he says in there. And the other thing he says is, I am confident in this one thing, that he who began this work, he's faithful to complete it, right? And he's, he's just, especially a guy like me that has 18 felonies on my record, I used to do this and this, and even the way that society is designed to tell me that that's all I'm ever going to do. No, no. And 
man, I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to, I'm not going to look back. I'm going to look ahead. I'm going to run this thing. If you look back, you're going to trip up. <laughs> Keep your eye forward to the author and finisher of your faith. That's good. Amen. And back could be, it can be the dirt that we did in the street. Or it could be the thought that we had 30 seconds ago. Yeah. Come on. You know? Let's move forward. It could be the mistakes that we made during our childhood, or it could be a mistake we made yesterday or today. You know? And the enemy, he's constantly wanting to remind you of your mistakes. He's wanting to heap uh, guilt, shame, and condemnation on you for things that you did. You know? But we have to keep our eyes on what Jesus did. Amen? Because his blood is speaking better things. His blood is crying out mercy and grace and forgiveness. And it covers all those sins. You know, when we repent and we come before the Father, and we're like, Father, I missed it. His blood covers all that. And now we can just continue to look forward. Continue to look. And He's constantly, <clears throat> as we saw as we were studying out the revivals of old, He's constantly, I'm not talking about new Scripture, but He's constantly revealing Himself. We're learning more and more about Him in the Word. Amen? We're learning, even you know, with Bobby coming on board, we're learning things that we've missed in this as a ministry. And now we're honing in on them. How can we better the ministry? But we can't get caught up on that. Let's get caught up on where we are and what we need to do. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And still, you know, we need to do individually, you guys, myself, we got to continue to major in the majors. What's the major? The gospel. Intimacy, the gospel, the Word of God, Love. relationship with the Holy Spirit. Love. That's right. Because bottom line, like our friend told us the other day, if we get you guys out of here prematurely, we're really setting y'all up to fail. Even if you're fully equipped with every resource you could possibly have, if your mind hadn't been renewed, and you don't have that relationship with the Lord intact, then you're going to probably be calling us like, <laughs> I mean, I hate to say that, but it just is what it is. You know, we have to have our mind renewed to the gospel. I know Bobby was the same way because I got to meet Bobby when he was in process. I mean, we're still in process, but I mean, when he was like in his building season. A lot of y'all, I don't know if y'all were here when he shared his testimony, but he actually, he graduated from the valley. Like, he went through the Crossroads program. And when I met him, he was in his Solomon season. Like, he was pressing in. I mean, hours a day in prayer, the Word. And, and really, that's what's going to promote you. That's what you want to promote you. You want the Lord to promote you. And as you spend time with Him, as you seek Him, He's going to begin to open doors. Anybody that I know that is really flourishing in life and stepping into the things that God's called them to do, these are people that have gone through a process of prayer in the Word, and then God brings the promotion. So take advantage, especially the transition guys, take advantage of this time you got. I know it's not a lot, but just take advantage when you're not working, or even at work, on your way to work. Man, utilize, utilize technology. Man, I constantly, I know when I was working at FedEx, I constantly had the Word in my ear. Whether it was worship, the Bible, a series, constantly. And that's forever. I still do that. If I'm not hanging out with my family, doing family stuff, I'm listening to the Word. Why? Because I know the power of the Word. I know the Gospel is the power of salvation. I know it's that. God told Joshua, meditate on my Word night and day. And that's going to make you prosperous. That's going to give you success. Seriously. That's what gave me, that's what kept me in a state of peace when I finally came to the realization that after seven years that those appeals weren't going to go through. <laughs> you know, year after year, I thought this next appeal was going to go through. And then we filed another one and it got shot down. We filed another one and it got shot down. Thousands and thousands of dollars on lawyers. <laughs> And all of it to the wind. And then I finally just said, Lord, almost like Jesus, I know it wasn't His will that I do all that time, 
but I had to just lay my life down. I had to deny myself, pick up my cross, and said, all right, Father, your will be done. Let's do this. I'm here. I know I'm going to be here, so I'm going to do what I need to do while I'm here. And then he just continuously opens doors. Like, I can sit here and tell you every door that he opened, like, even in prison. Even in prison. Joseph had favor even in prison. You know? And he was a pro- when he came up out of slavery, the Bible said he was a prosperous man coming out of slavery. Why? Because he was with God. He was walking with God. He was walking with God. He's our inheritance. Amen? God told Abraham, he says, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield and exceedingly great reward. Josh signs your paycheck, but ultimately God's your source. Yeah, he's your provider. That's right. Promise you. That's how you want it too. Sometimes we, you know, chasing after side jobs and stuff like that, and, and, and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's cool. But sometimes God's saying, no, I want you to seek my kingdom. Oh, your extra time, what's God doing? What's God doing in Abel right now? Or what's God doing at my church that I can get plugged into? You might go to an event and somebody might say, how you doing, son? Nice to meet you. I want to buy you a truck. Well, you just don't understand. I've got all these fines. I've got like $6,000 like $6, in fines. Okay. Who do I make the check to? That happened to me. That's my testimony. That's part of Bobby's testimony. I came home and somebody gave me a car. <laughs> gave it to me. And it just kept getting better and better. You know, I'm not saying it's going to fall in your lap like that, but it might fall in your lap like that, for real. When you're seeking the kingdom. But you, it's all about being in position. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6.33, and His righteousness, and all these things will be added. See, in the world, it was a rat race. I'm chasing after these things. I'm, I'm trying to touch everything I can to make money. I don't care who it hurts. I don't care if it hurts me. I don't care if it hurts other people. I'm just trying to make money. And I was chasing after the things. And there's a way that seems right. See, in the world, that seems right. It doesn't make sense. In the world, they store up and store up and store up. In the kingdom, he says, Give it. Give it. <laughs> Bless. Come on. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Mm-hmm. To be open-handed. Mm-hmm. Constantly thinking of ways you can be a blessing. And the next thing you know, I really believe when, when, when Jesus spoke to the rich young ruler, and the rich young ruler was like, I did this, I did that, and I did that. And he says, That's, those things are great, but are you, willing to give up, are you willing to give up everything to follow me? And he said no, and he walked away. Sad. Very sad. Walked away sad. I believe, I know from experience, that Jesus wasn't asking him to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Jesus was saying, follow me. I'll be your source. I'll turn you into a distribution center for the kingdom. No longer storing up things, but I'm going to funnel resources through you to reach other lives. That's what he wanted to do, I believe. Because that's the way that's the way the kingdom works. If anybody and all of y'all have experienced that through Josh's life, because the, the Lord's been using him to funnel out. Yeah, I'll say this too. Something that that um that God's been really bringing me into this revelation is, I don't have any more money when I was like working eighty hours a week than I do now. <laughs> I know, I know. A lot of people think, "Well, you got guys that work for you, yeah." But all that struggle and hustle and bustle, you know, where I was missing the family time and wasn't praying. Really, what really what happened in that season is, instead of gaining more, I got off. I wasn't hearing like I was supposed to hear, and I got off, and I went backwards financially and in my faith. But now that I'm in rest. And then I know he's my provider. Really, it's a good, it's a sweet space because there, no matter how hard I went out and worked right now, it would never be enough. I have to trust him. 
right, with the size of everything that it is. You know, all these bills that come in, the payroll every week, there's no kind of work that I could go personally do to help that. I got to trust it. So I'm just saying I'm enjoying this abundant life that Jesus promised me. And if you're not living an abundant life, you might need to step back to the drawing board and get some revelation because that's what Jesus promised you. I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Does that mean skyscrapers and Lambos and penthouses? I don't think so. I don't think that means that. But you should be enjoying your life. Serving Jesus should bring joy to you. Making an impact. That's right. You, you, yeah. You should. There should be joy. Okay. Burning. That's just like and again, the and I was uh, stressing how much I was having. Uh, yeah. SR twenty two. That was good. You can hear it. Too. And I was stressing how I was doing because when I started, all I had was money to get the day. The rain. So I called uh, Preston and I said, I asked the dude to pick up my claim and everything. I said, uh, when are y'all going to take that uh, payment for $51 off my car? And he said, it's going to be paid. You know? It's going to be paid. I said, no way. I mean, it ain't left my account yet. And it's going to be paid. It's, it take I got to check days, into that. After that day, I kept watching my account, and the fifty-one dollars never came off my account. It just it had already been made. Amen. So God works. You know, he's gonna look out for you. Christopher so, probably, Christopher probably, when he paid that initially, he left it on reoccurring on there, right? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> Amen. Ain't gonna get paid today. Ain't gonna get paid okay. today. Yeah, you know what I'm no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. I want to say another thing about Vern too. I didn't know about him. Vern is also a professional painter. He could have went and got a job at, at twenty some dollars an hour somewhere, but he came here to learn a new trade. And what he said was, "My God was money. I used to chase money, and I just felt like if money didn't matter, being in the right place mattered." And that's what the Lord was telling me. Okay. I got it. Yeah, this is all just like hit me so hard it's like confirming so much for me and these are the talks that we've been having huh Tyler and Josh it's exactly what the Holy Spirit's been talking to us but look I just want to share this thing so like um, there's a lot to build it's a time to build that's our corporate season still so like with the all these assignments and all the things that we need to do Okay, so I had a I had a mini dream vision like I do, you know. It's not a weird thing, it's a God thing. Everyone has them. So there was a path and it was in the forest and the path was already created and there was like trees, right? And we we're like going really fast and then all of a sudden there was a big tree in the path. Like those trees in Oregon, you know, that they drive through. Yeah, right. Redwood. Boom, right? And I was at the tree and I was like, What do I do? I want to go around the tree, you know, I can get where I need to go. But then I felt like, well, if I go around the tree, everyone who's coming behind me is not going to be able to go through that that little path. We got to go, you know. So anyway, I fell asleep. I was in prayer and all that, and then I fell asleep. And I felt like the Lord was saying rest. And then the next day, we came, and the word that was spoken up here was rest. Trusting God, trusting God. And then slowly as I was praying more, Right? I make my time, I pace around in my room and I pray in tongues and I got my journal and I flip through a couple pages and I write what I feel is like from the Lord. It's exactly what he's saying. I begin to get instruction of what to do next. He'll instruct you. He'll drop something in your heart. Like this is how you do it. Because I don't want to take a stick or a rock and just start clobbering the tree to get to build a, a, a hole through the tree. I'll get tired. When I when we get to those points, we have to sit and pray and receive instruction. We need to get a chisel, a power tool, create a work schedule so that I'm not exhausted when I get to the other side of the tree. Maybe I need to go back and say, hey, I need help with this, right? You don't just 
flail your arms, you want to strike in a way that's, you know what I mean, like intentional and effective and be diligent and prudent and receive from the Lord how to do it. So anyway, that's where I feel like like I'm at with the certain assignments for building. And I feel like that's where we're at too. Oh, Manuel, I was praying about you and stuff. And um, I pray for everyone here and there, but I don't like intentionally pray. I like praying tongues, and I know when we utilize that gift that we're praying His perfect will. And sometimes He'll give you just ideas and unctions, and you know you're praying for someone. And He showed me an elephant. And how an elephant, and I'm sorry I'm taking up so much time, but an elephant, when an elephant gives birth, you should Google it. It's a really long time for an elephant to give birth. Like a year and a half or two years or something, some crazy thing. But an elephant gives birth to the biggest baby out of any mammal. Like, whales' babies aren't as big per, you know, per, like, you know, whatever, ratio or whatever. So when an elephant gives birth, you need a really big operating room. You need to prepare to feed the baby. You can't just, you can't, you can't have an elephant baby on Section 8. You, you can't have an elephant baby on food stamps, that $200 just ain't enough, right? But when it's time for the baby to have, when it's time for the elephant to give birth, there's going to be some transitioning. Birthing is uncomfortable and all these kind of things. When I was praying, the Lord showed me that with you, that it was a time in your life to where things may begin to become uncomfortable, but you're in a birthing stage. Things that were even over time for overbirth, like it's just been taking a long time are about to be birthed and that's what the uncomfortable transition in this next season are so hold on to that hope man you're giving birth to an elephant baby okay that is funny dude and i think and i believe that that's a lot of people in here who's been in transition i believe that's a lot of people that it's time things things may begin to get uncomfortable things may begin to transition and it's going to be challenging but that's a word for everyone in here yeah. As the things yeah. get uncomfortable, you're about to give birth to an elephant. <laughs> I love y'all. Sorry, I didn't mean to go up. Sometimes I'd be holding stuff in. I love y'all. Some further interpretation. <laughs> an elephant! <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about the tree and cutting the tree, and uh, Ecclesiastes 10.10 came to mind. It says, if the axe is dull, and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. <laughs> so you could chop a tree all day long. If the blades ain't, the blades haven't been sharpened, then you just box in the wind. You know, but wisdom, you know, from the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, is how you sharpen the blade. And, and you know you have to you have to pause and you have to sharp you have to seek God's wisdom, and then you can cut that path through the tree, where the other cars can come behind us and go through. It. You know, so that's really where we're at right now. You know, we're we're seeking. All of us are seeking wisdom in here. Amen. We should be for our lives. So uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Okay. Come to me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Oh. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here we go. There's that ox. You know, we've got to take off that yoke that we've been carrying. You know, kind of like I think about Mary and Martha. You know, you got Martha. She's just ripping and running all over the place. And Mary's sitting there at Jesus' feet. And Martha gets upset. She's like, man, Jesus, tell Mary to come over here with me. You know, I'm, do I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all these things. She's just sitting there at your feet. And Jesus said, no. What she's chosen is right. And the thing that she's chosen will not be taken away from her. You know, so we don't want to, like we keep saying, we don't want to skip that process. Yes, it's good. It's, we want to, we're called to serve. Amen? But before we serve, or before we encounter this tree, 
you know, we need to have, before we have our Martha season, we need to have a Mary season where we're sitting at the feet and we're getting instructions on how to serve, who to serve, where to serve, when to serve, you know? Then we go through. Can yeah. you write that down and have that for Friday? We're having a meeting Friday with that act saying, I think that's an enthusiastic. Can yeah. you remember that Friday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's important. Okay. Amen. So watch this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that initial rest is when we got born again. We got saved, and the minute we got born again, we entered into the rest. You know, and that's why it's important that we get revelation. We need to understand the truth because, you know, Jesus said that. That's a fact. We enter into, when we get saved, we enter into the rest. Sometimes, for me, it took me a long time to get that. I didn't get that when I was a young believer. It was years later when I got that. So I'm telling you now, when you got born again, you entered into the rest. Amen. You entered into salvation. Like Brother Bobby shared last week, you don't have to worry about eternal torment now. You don't have to worry about that as long as you stay in Him. As long as you don't denounce your faith and walk away, you're going to be in Him. You're going to be with Him forever. God eternity. So, the minute you get born again, the minute you take on the yoke of Jesus, you enter into rest, but there's more. Now I've got to what? I've got to renew my mind. I've got to renew my mind to the Word of God. Why? Because I've got... When I got locked up at 27, I had 27 years basically of baggage that I've been carrying. Where I learned like the world, taught like the world, thought like the world, acted like the world, and now I've got to be transformed. Now I've got to be changed. And this is this is part two in verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Mm. Learn from me. That's Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. Now watch this. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Right? There's a spiritual rest when we get born again. We're in Him. And now as I sit at His feet, as I abide, He says, take my yoke. That means I'm connected to Him. I'm abiding. I'm, a, I'm remaining. I'm staying in His presence. And now He says, learn from me and I'm going to give you soul rest. That's your mind, your will, and your emotions. See, people... When people start talking about prosperity, prosperity's got a very negative... I can see as soon as I said that, people looked up. Because as soon as people hear prosperity, they're like, oh no, I don't want to have... You know, God doesn't want me to have anything. He wants me to be broke. No, the devil's a lie. The devil's a lie. He wants you to make an impact. And like Josh said, I'm not talking about, you know, just flaunting a bunch of wealth and riches and all that. I'm talking about having what you need to fulfill the assignment that's on your life, to do it well, and to empower other people to do the same thing. That's what we were called to do. So prosperity starts with the spirit spirit man first. Because if I'm not prospering in the spirit, then I'm separated from God. If I haven't received salvation, then I'm separated from God. I could have all the money in the world. I could have all the smarts in the world. I could have the most beautiful wife in the world, but if I'm not in Him, it's not doing me a bit of good. Because as soon as I die, which in the world, we're not promised tomorrow, it could happen any moment. There's no covenant, there's no protection. And if I'm not born again, if I'm not born again, then I'm going to spend eternity separate from God. So, see, people hear prosperity and they automatically think money, and that's part of it, but that's on down the pole. The first part is our spirit man. He wants us to prosper spiritually. He wants us to, to be born again. The second part of prosperity is prospering in my soul, what we just read. It's prospering in my mind, my will, and my emotions. In 3 John 2, the Apostle John broke it down like this. He says, Beloved, speaking to the church. He says, I wish above all things 
Say all things. All things. <laughs> that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So if I want to prosper in my finances, if I want to prosper in my relationships, if I want to prosper in my soul, if I want to prosper in my physical health, prosper and be in health, then this right here needs to be renewed. This right here needs to be changed. All that stinking thinking needs to go. Poverty mindset, got to go. Doubt, unbelief, fear, got to go. And as I get to know him, the Bible says, as we, we ended on this the last time that I taught in 1 John 4, 17. It says, as he is, so are we in this world. Mm. And it talks about the Father being loved. As He is loved, so are we in this world. And it says that the perfect love of the Father does what? It casts us out every fear. Every fear. Fear of not succeeding. Fear of not being enough. Fear of lack. You know, some a lot of guys, including myself, I never really had a real job in the street before I went to jail. I mean, I, you know, I played around with some stuff, but I was on that type of time. You know, so when I finally started, when I went to college and started taking classes and, and, and started really focusing on some, some normal things, there was a fear there that I wasn't going to be able to do it. But the Bible says we already have the mind of Christ. We already have the mind of Christ. I like that. Angel just got his wings, right, Josh? We already have the mind of Christ. See, that's mind renewal. <laughs> See, we've gone through this whole pattern through life where we feel like we've got to do all these things to attain. But Jesus already, he already attained everything. Christopher spoke on this yesterday. He said, you know, we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. This isn't something that we're trying to check off all the boxes to become righteous. No, we've already been made righteous. Amen? We've already been given the mind of Christ. We've already been given the faith. He says, I've given each of you the measure of faith. And that's God. That's, that's faith coming from God. That's why a mustard seed of faith can do what it does because it's a mustard seed of God's faith. And a mustard seed of faith that says that, that mustard seed, that tree will take over, literally consume an entire garden. That little bitty seed. And that's all it takes. Have faith in God. Have faith in God for your finances. Have faith in God for your relationship. Have faith in God for your health. Have faith in God for the vision that He shows you. But we've got to keep our mind on Him. We've got to keep our mind on Him. I know the world's jacked up right now. It's jacked up in the natural. But God's still on the throne. In the beginning, He spoke a word into chaos and He brought order. And he's still functioning the same way today. He's deposited his word inside of you, Bobby. He's deposited his word inside of you, Pete, Josh, Josh. He's deposited his word inside of each and every one of y'all. And right now, wherever you're going today, wherever you're going to the workplace, in the marketplace, he has placed a solution inside of you. Mm. And wherever you're going, that word's inside of you, and it's going to bring order into that chaotic situation that you're facing today. There's things right now in, in our lives, Bobby, I'll say us, that we're looking at that seem a bit chaotic. But guess what? God has placed a solution inside of us. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God has placed a solution inside of us, and it's going to bring order. Why? Because he says, when you put your when you keep your eyes on me, Isaiah 26, 3, when you keep your eyes on me, he says, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. That means shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Perfect and peace means shalom. Double shalom. But we got to keep our mindset on Him. 
Not the mistakes I made years ago. Not the mistakes I made yesterday. Not the mistakes I made this morning. But I got to keep my mind solely fixed on Him. And He says, I'm going to bring peace into that situation. Even in the midst of the storm. Even in the midst of defeat. Even in the midst of lack. Even in the midst of sickness, even in the midst of disease, whatever the situation is, family broken, broken family, broken homes, Jesus says, I can bring that back together, no problem. Now, it might not happen overnight, because that mess didn't happen overnight. You know, I try to encourage people with that all the time. You're, you're trying to bring rec- restoration and reconciliation in your family, and God's all about that. But if it's something that we destroyed and tore up for 10 or 15 or 20 years, man, it might take a little time. But guess what? Just be patient. Be patient one day at a time, one step at a time. And I promise you, as you continue to seek Him, He's going to begin to bring those things back together. Amen. But He has to stay at the forefront. Yeah. Amen? Bobby, you want to close this out? Uh, Father God, we just, uh, we just receive Your Word. We receive... Your instruction, God. We receive the things that you're speaking to us um, as a body corporately. We receive your word individually. Um, we thank you, Lord, that this week just it's been that you are big. We acknowledge how big you are. We acknowledge your authority in all the earth, God. To rest, God. To enter your rest, Lord. To trust you, Lord. To seek your face and be instructed by you. And right now, God, we just give you every burden right now. Everything that would try and uh, cling to us, that would force us into our own will, God, we resist those things. We command it to flee. We submit to you and give it completely to you, God. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.